Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, during this lunch time, I'm going to talk to you about an ultrasound approach of cervical and small upper limb nerves. In the jungle of the small nerves, some pioneers, like, like next speaker, Mr. Callan Martinoli, have shown us a more or less easy path. In this talk, I um, don't speak about uh, main, uh, main nerves and of brachial pressures and upper, upper limb that are now well known. And I'm focusing on small nerves, smaller than one millimeter in diameter. So I begin with ultrasound of cervical nerve. I was studying ultrasound of cervical nerve and um, um, brachial plexus in a few years when I had a chance to attend a conference of Mr. Carlo Martinelli in Paris in 2016 on the term of cervical nerve. And this is a stolen drawing of this conference. With, uh, this is an axial view with the intersclerin space the anteroscalene, middle scalin, and the root C5 to T1. C5 is a more superficial. A little bit lower, this is a trunk. The upper trunk is a more superficial. And in this drawing, you can find the main landmarks for um, most of cervical nerves. The supracascapular nerve is in front of middle scalene. The vagus nerve is back to artery, um, carotid artery, and jugular vein. In front of anteroscalene, you can find phrenic nerve. Deep to sternocleidomastoid muscle, you can find spinal accessory nerve, and piercing, uh, uh, piercing the middle scaling, the thoracic lower nerve. I'm going to describe seven of these nerves, and the first one is the suprascapular nerve. It originates from C5 and C6 and upper trunk. It passes in front of the middle scaling, then laterally behind the homoeoid muscle and deep to the trapezius. Then it reaches the suprascapular incision and behind the scapula, the spinal glenoid notch. It provides the innovation, um, the motor innovation for supra and infraspinatus. And to locate this nerve, we use the carbon core technique, starting from C5, and this is this carbon core technique. A little zoom on C5 and C6. C5 and C6 join. Join and merge to um, give rise to the uh, upper trunk. The upper trunk is very short and divides itself in two branches, posterior and anterior. And the suprascapular nerve detaches either from the upper trunk, either from the posterior branches. And this is the corresponding distinction with, in blue, the suprascapular nerve, upper trunk, posterior division of upper trunk. The demonstration now, C5 with a bifid process of cervical transverse. C5 is the most superficial. C6 is air, C5, C6. They join, they merge. Here it is uh, upper trunk with these fascicles. And a bundle is going to splitting off this bundle. This bundle is a suprascapular nerve. More laterally, you can find a noticeable landmark, which is a uh, armoyoid muscle the arm of the other soul is here, and it's just right here. A, a case of pathology with this 40 years or, or older uh, woman, a brutal pain in the left arm after a birth child. This is a personal Turner syndrome. With this MRI, you can see any direct sign of this uh, personal Turner with uh, hypersinal intensity T2 on the suprascapular and infrascapular nerve right here but it's difficult to see directly the, the nerve. With ultrasound, um, the muscular hypertrophy is obvious, is this, uh, this side, this is a pathological side, but you can also see directly the nerve, and the nerve is right here, and it looks quite sickened, the upper trunk and suprascapular nerve here, big nerve. The sickening of the nerve is more obvious with this longitudinal view, the so nervous second, and there is a restriction zone right here. So, a bulging of the nerve, 1.9 millimeters, a torsional phenomenon, and sometimes you can see the restriction zone like this. The second nerve is a vagus nerve. It uh, comes from medulla oblongata, it crosses the foramen jugular, and then uh, it, um, it travels inside into the carotid sheet. 
then he um, uh, travel um, in the mediastinum and give a small recurrent branch, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, then it reaches the abdomen. It provides a motor and sensitive innervation for pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, heart, and gastrointestinal tract. This is a demonstration of this nerve with a two long mark, jugular vein. This is the carotid artery, and the nerve is right here in a short view, axial view, and I tilt the probe to show you the long axis of this nerve. It's quite easy to see right here. During a um, plexus block, you can observe a paralysis of recurrent lunger nerve, uh, causing by a diffusion of the anesthesia uh, in this state, and you can cause a off nerve. Third nerve, the sphrenic nerve. It originates from C4, sometimes C3 and C5. It wraps around the anterior surface of the anterior scalene and leaves the neck between superclavian artery back and vein forward. Then it goes down close to the mediastinal pleura and reaches the diaphragm. It, it provides motor innervation for inspiring muscles and sensitive innervation for pericardium pleura and diaphragmatic peritoneum. This is a demonstration of this nerve. The um, interscalene space, the nerve emerges here and it wraps around the anterior scalene like this. We can follow it quite far. During uh, block plexus, uh, if the um, anesthesia go here, you can observe a diaphragmatic paralysis. So the nerve number four is a lung thoracic nerve. It originates from C5, C6, and C7. It perforates the middle scalene, which is the main landmark, and it passes between the clavicle and the first rib. Then it travels along the surface of the anterior serratus, providing its innervation. Uh, it could be damaged with strong movement. This is a demonstration of this nerve. This is the middle scalene. This is the interscaline space, and you can see here a small bundle. This small bundle is a long thoracic nerve. Sometimes there is two bundles, and this is the emergence right here. A pathologic example with this 25 years old man with a scapular alata with gradual onset, two months after his arm stretching, he tried to rein in a half. And the pathological seat uh, localization is right here at the emergence of the middle scalene in this case. I'll show you the case with this video. One bundle, two bundles, they emerge. This is a long thoracic nerve and it looks quite big in this uh, short axis, but it's more obvious with the long axis. It's rather big, rather thickened here. And this is an indirect sign with the muscle atrophy of the uh, anterior serratus here. So nerve number five is the spinal nerve. It uh, originates from medulla oblongata, spinal cord. It crosses from and jugular, and it travels uh, um, in contact with the internal carotid artery. Then it perforates the sternocleidomastoid muscle and is superficial at the level of the cervical triangle right here and go, reaches a deep portion of the anterior trapezius. Could be damaged with cervical surgery or fall in the head, and you can observe scapula alata also. So um, this is a way, but backwards this time. This is the trapezius, this is a small nerve. No, oh, sorry. This is a trapezius, this is a small nerve, deep to the trapezius, and we go proximal now. The nerve is very, very superficial, yeah very superficial, and this is a sternocleidomastoid muscle. It is deep now to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It pierces the muscle and provides the innervation of sternocleidomastoid muscle. A pathological case with this 50 years old man, um, a right trapezoid deficit after a cervical surgery, and the problem in this case is right here. I'll show you the video with the nerve, sternocleidomastoid muscle, spinal nerve, and 
Here is the neuroma just before the trapezius. Nerve number six, suprascapular nerves. It's supraclavicular nerve, sorry. Uh, it's originated from C3 and C4. The common trunk is behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and then it perforates the fascia and divided into three branches and provides sensitive innervation of the skin of this region. It could be damaged in clavicle surgery, for example, and look at this nerve, it's very small. This is one centimeter, so it's 0 0.1 um, millimeter for this nerve. And an example of pathology with this uh, paraglider, a clavicle fracture operated one year ago, and the problem is exactly in this branch in the, this pathological case. i show you. This is a nerve, this is a nerve, and here, this is a small neuroma, and it's very painful when you push with uh, the probe in, the, in this location. The last cervical nerve I will describe is a greater occipital nerve. It's um, uh, coming from the second occipital dorsal cervical branch. It curves around the lower edge of the obliquus inferior capitis muscle and rise between obliquus inferior and semispinal capitis. Then it perforates this muscle and provides an innervation of the occipital spleen and the motor innervation for some cervical muscles. This is the shape of the posterior arch with a CT scan, round shape for C1, triangular shape for C2, and it's the same in, with uh, ultrasound, triangular shape with beefy tip for C2, the muscle, the muscle, and the nerve is right here between the two muscles. You can show the long axis of this nerve. This is the long axis of this nerve. So it's um, quite... Uh, quite easy to spot here and then to infiltrate it here in this location. And Kessler team described an infiltration technique with uh, US guidance or city guidance exactly in this, in this place. And this was used um, by other team. This is, uh, I close now the chapter um, of cervical nerve and I'm going to talk to small sensitive nerve of the forearm. The first is the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve. This is a terminal branch of the musculocutaneous, and this is a reminder of musculocutaneous nerve. It arises from the lateral cord, it perforates the um, coracobrachialis muscles, and it passes between biceps and brachialis muscles. In the elbow, Musculocutaneous pierces through the antibrachial fascia, and after this point, this nerve is called lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve. There is two uh, noticeable landmarks. The first one is the biceps tendon in here, and the second one is a cephalic vein. And then it is split in two branches. This is a main landmark with a cephalic vein, LABC, and all the landmark of the anterior part of the elbow with biceps, artery, and median nerve. The same with the video. This is the biceps, the artery, the median nerve, and the small nerve is LABC with cephalic vein. You don't have to press a lot if you want to see this, this cephalic vein, the nerve, the biceps. In the forearm, LABC is satellite of the cephalic vein in the subcutaneous tissue, and here it is. And in 25% of cases, it's closed with the radial artery, and it's also closed with the sensitive branch of radial nerve. So there is an, um, an overlapping of the territory, sensitive territory exactly here in this place. Demonstration with air LABC, this is brachioratialis, and this is sensitive branch of radial nerve. And lower, at the breast level, LABC, sensitive branch of radial nerve and radial artery. The same with video, LABC, sensitive branch of radial nerve, brachioradialis. And you see these nerves are very, very near. And very, the artery is here, one nerve, one nerve, and they go. So there is often an overlapping of the sensitive territories. An example of pathology with this patient of five, 50 years old with a rupture of biceps operated three months ago. You have a pain of the outer edge of the forearm. This is a repair tendon. This is a second tendon and a tendon. This is a anchor. 
And with this video, this is LABC, you can see a modification of the nerve right here. This is a, lo he loses uh, his fascicular aspect, he's big, and this is here uh, a scar, a subcutaneous scar. In these images, you can see the neuroma of the nerve and the big tendon and the uh, scar, subcutaneous scar. The last nerve is medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. The, his territory is in a uh, range right here, and this is a territory of medial brachial cutaneous. It originates from C8 and T1 from the upper trunk and medial cord. This is the MABC here. In the axilla, MABC merge behind the pectoralis minor, and goes down in front of axillary vein and within the artery right here. In the arm, it runs along the brachial artery and uh, through the brachial canal. It's in front of ulnar nerve right here. But the main landmark is now it uh, perforates the brachial fascia and becomes superficial and satellite of the basilic vein. In the elbow and forearm, it's divided in two branches, anterior and posterior, and the anterior itself divided in two small branches. This is uh, the, the axilla with the artery, vein. This is the main nerve, musculocutaneous, median, radial, ulnar nerve, and M MABC is here, and uh, brachial is, uh, is here. This video, musculocutaneous, median nerve, Radial nerve, ulnar nerve, and MABC is right here, just here. At the arm, in the level of arm, this is a MABC, this is a ulnar nerve, they are very near. Ulnar, MABC, it pierces the brachial fascia right here and is satellite of the basilic vein right here. At the elbow, in the elbow, biceps, artery, median nerve, and this is the vein, basilic vein, and the nerve is very small right here. A pathologic uh, example of pathology with this 40 years old uh, man, uh, pain for, uh, for six months of the left anterior internal fascia of the forearm, and you can follow the MABC is here. This is the anterior division, and the division in two small branches, one and one, one and one. We follow this one, and this is the lesion, the nervous lesion. Longitudinal plane of this lesion, the tumor, eccentric lesion, and the very small nerve. So this is the operative view. This is an eccentric lesion of the MABC nerve. We thought it was a schwannoma, but it was not. It was a macrophagic granula granuloma. Another pathological application could be the, um, the peak line because the MABC is very near the location of the punction. In conclusion, with a good landmarks and with um, up-to-date US device, you are able to rediscover anatomy and to, uh, to study uh, smaller, smaller than one millimeter in diameter. Obrigado.